In this example, we're told that a 300 gram piece of iron at 200 degrees Celsius, so let's draw this. Here's the iron, and we're told the mass is 300 grams, and the temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. And it's placed in a 130 gram aluminum cup. So here's the aluminum. And for the aluminum, the mass is 130 grams. And it contains 220 grams of liquid at 20 degrees Celsius. So here's the liquid inside. The liquid has a mass of 220 grams. And we're told the liquid is at 20 degrees Celsius. So the temperature there I write is 20 degrees Celsius. And what you need to recognize is that this liquid is in close contact here with the aluminum cup. So the aluminum cup is also at that temperature. So I'll write that here as some known info about the aluminum. The aluminum is also at 20 degrees Celsius. Even though that wasn't given, we're given the temperature of the water and the water and the cup are together so they have to be at the same temperature. Now when this iron is dropped in here the final temperature is observed to be 49 degrees Celsius. That means when the iron plops in here into the water this iron which is very hot or we don't know it's water but when it drops into the liquid we know it cools off heat leaves the iron and goes into the liquid and the aluminum. The, the liquid and the aluminum are still together so they're both going to get warmer as a result of this hot piece of iron being dropped in there and the iron's going to cool off. We set this up as conservation of energy. Think about what the heat is doing, where it's going, and realize that any heat that's leaving one thing has to go into other things. And in this case the heat is leaving the iron and it's going into the aluminum and the liquid. So we set it up like this. We say the heat lost by the iron will equal the heat gained by the liquid and the heat gained by the aluminum. So I'll write heat gained by the liquid plus the heat gained by the aluminum. So this is essentially a statement of the law of conservation of energy applied to this particular situation. Mathematically, I would say it like this. The heat lost by the iron is mc delta t, and that's for the iron. So we're talking about the mass of the iron, the specific heat of the iron, and the change in temperature all of the iron. This equals mc delta t for the liquid plus mc delta t for the aluminum. And we can put in the numbers. The mass of the iron is 300, starting over here on the left side. The mass of the iron, I'm going to scroll down where I have a little more room to write the equation. The mass of the iron is 300. The specific heat of the iron is 0.11, and the delta t for the iron the iron starts at 200 and it cools down to 49. We're given the final temperature. So we can just do that calculation. 200 cooling down to 49, that's a delta T of 151 degrees. That's going to equal the MC delta T for the liquid, the heat gained by the liquid. So the mass of the liquid, we were told, is 220. The specific heat of the liquid, we don't know. And that is what we're looking for. And the change in temperature of the liquid, we do know. It started at 20 degrees Celsius and warmed up to 49. So the delta T for the liquid is 29. And then we have plus MC delta T for the aluminum. Well, the mass of the aluminum is 130. C, the specific heat for the aluminum, is 0.22 and the delta T for the aluminum is also 29.
because it also starts at 20 and heats up to 49. Now this one's pretty easy. We just multiply 300 times 0.11 times 151. That comes out to 4,983. That equals 220 times 29 times C. That comes out to 6,380 C plus 130 times 0.22 times 29. That comes out to 829. Routine algebra at this point, we subtract 829 from each side. We get 4,154 on the left. We still have 6,380 C on the right. So we divide both sides by 6,380 and we end up with 0.65. C is 0.65 and the units here, I didn't put the units on all of these just because the equation was getting so big, but this was in uh, grams, the temperature changes were all in degrees Celsius and the C, the specific heats, specific heats were all in calories per gram degree Celsius and so C in this case here will also come out to be calories per gram degree Celsius and that's our answer 0.65 calories per gram degree Celsius is the specific heat of that liquid